Hello everyone, this is Gary Tonnenkoff from MotherToSnapshot.com. Today I wanted to talk about Google's Nick collection. And I think that when Google first purchased the Nick collection, they really weren't that interested in using it for themselves in the desktop version. I think they really uh, were more interested in um, what they could get out of it for mobile devices. And so I think since they're really, you know, going forward with mobile, not so much desktop and all the new things that are out there, even though it's a great collection, it's probably just not, you know, that popular for them anymore. And they probably won't update it very much anymore, if at all. Uh, but they've given it away for free, so it's a great tool to use and you should try it. And the reason I'm making this video is I have it installed on Photoshop CC, but I'm noticing that I can't find the standalone plugin in my computer and I can't, I don't have it installed in Lightroom. So when I had bought the collection years ago, I, I guess I never totally installed it in all the places that it could be installed. So I'm going to take you through the download and installation and uh, so at least you'll get to see those uh, some of those steps hopefully nothing goes wrong because I'm doing this live and I don't know what's gonna happen so let's just jump in there and and see what happens and see if I can um, get some more versions of this installed alright so I'm gonna come to um, google.com forward slash Nick collection and that brings up this page. They don't even ask for an email address or anything uh, uh, like that. You just click download now and uh, it'll download it right away. So uh, I'm just going to open it and um, go through the install. And I'm doing it on a PC. So if you have a Mac, things may look a little bit different, but uh, there is a Mac download version. Okay, English. Yes. Okay. Just go through the wizard, um, terms of service. All right, we don't need that. We'll agree to the terms of service. It's going to go into the Nick collection. It's making a second one. Uh, I guess that's fine. All right, what programs do I want it to install on? I already have it installed on Photoshop, so I think I'm going to in avoid that. Uh, I happen to have Elements 10 in here, so I might as well choose that. Um, and Lightroom is the one that I'm most interested in. Okay, it's finished, so finish that, and then I'll go to uh, Lightroom and see if it's there. Okay, after installing this, when you go to, into Lightroom, if you go to Photo and then Edit In, you should see the plugins that were added here. In this case, I didn't see them, and so I had to figure out how they had to had to be added. So all you have to do to add them is go to Edit if you're on a PC to Preferences. If you're on a Mac, it's under Lightroom Preferences, I believe. And then if you come over to External Editing, right here where it says Additional External Editor, I'm going to go and find my collection. And I've already done Silver Effects and Viveza, so I'll go to uh, Sharpener Pro here. And I'll choose one of these. I'll do the top one. I'll choose it. And then I have to save it as a preset. Save current settings as a new preset. Uh, Sharpener Pro. And I should have looked which one this was. Uh, Sharpener Pro Output. That must be the Output Settings. So I'll just put Output. And I'll hit Create. And then I'll say OK. Now if I come and look here under Edit In, I have Sharpener Pro Output. So I'll go and do the other one just so that I know both of them are there. Uh, so there was Preferences. Edit Preferences. Again, go to External Editing. I have to choose this time the uh, Raw Sharpener. Uh, and this time when I save the settings, I'll call this the Raw Sharpener. And create that one. 
And if I go and look, edit in, now I have the raw sharpener and the output sharpener. So I just have to finish adding all of those. HDR Effects Pro is already in there because it and that's one of the ones that it does separately. It does HDR Effects Pro in a different way, and I'll show you that. I'll do define two. Okay, so I gotta give that a name. Also, my other settings here I'm outputting as a TIFF file um, using a larger color space, Adobe RGB 1998, 16-bit, 240, and compressing as a zip file and stacking with the original. So, I mean, your settings could vary here a little bit, but uh, those settings seem to work fairly well. So I'm going to continue adding those. Okay, now I've added all of them to Lightroom. The way I'm going to access most of these is by going to photo and then to edit in and here you can see all of them listed. The other way I could get to it is by just right clicking on any photo and going to edit in and again here they are listed. And uh, for example let's try Viveza this time. If I click on that it should open up. It's going to ask me to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Say OK. It's going to create the TIFF file that we told it to create and send it over to their uh, to whatever program I selected, which in this case is Viveza. It says the file formatted for that is not supported. Let me cancel that. One thing I've noticed to get Viveza to work properly, I had to use the JPEG format, and uh, I'll update those settings. And uh, let's see if I can open it now. It would not open the um, TIFF file or the Photoshop file for some reason, but it worked when I tried the JPEG. Yeah, it's loading the JPEG just fine now in Viveza. Okay, so I fully installed all the programs into Lightroom, and I did have a few issues with uh, the preferences for a few of the programs. The uh, sharpener, the two sharpener programs, the Define and the Viveza, I had to change the file format to JPEG for it to open. But all the other ones opened with the uh, TIFF file format without a problem. So uh, the only other thing uh, was that there was one other, the HDR effects program, and that is not opened from the photo edit in. You can find that under File and because it handles the file differently it's under export with preset and if you come down to google you should see hdr effects pro 2 so that one is handled a little bit differently so that's how you can install your software into um, into lightroom uh, i also have it installed in um, photoshop and you can also get to it from uh, just a, a standalone plugin so I'll show all of those in a separate video. So I hope this is helpful. Let, you, let me know in the comments uh, if you were able to install it in Lightroom and Photoshop and um, which plugins you like. Again, thanks. This has been Gary D. Tonicourt from morethanasnapshot.com.